morning and welcome. I'm Annie Campagna, Ranger at Coronado Historic Site, and I am here with Adrian Boggs, Instructional Coordinator at Coronado Historic Site, and we are staying eight feet apart so that I can remove my mask. And again, welcome, Annie Campagna, Historic Site Ranger, Coronado Historic Site, Bernalillo, New Mexico. Behind me is the Soap Tree Yucca, and the reason we're here today is to harvest the flower stalks from the soap tree yucca, because instructional coordinator Adrian Boggs is putting together a special treat for folks, and it's how to harvest and build your own walking stick. So the soap tree yucca you see behind me here is a native to uh, our region in the Southwest, and it grows approximately uh, as tall as 20 feet tall, depending on where it's located and how much moisture it gathers. And what you're seeing behind me is last year's flower stock and the brown ones you see on the ground that have fallen are two years old. We're going to harvest last year's stock. If you get two or three year old stocks, they're going to start splintering and they're hard to work with. So I'm going to come over here, reach up and very carefully, because these soap tree yuccas have very sharp spines, on the tips, excuse me, very sharp tips. And it's just gathering them and pulling them down. Traditionally, the Pueblo people would have harvested them once the flower stalks had been removed. And they would have done it by hand, by carefully pulling on the stalk so not to break the whole branch of the, of the bush. Today, modern, tools, you can use a pruning tool. So we're in April right now, and I normally would have harvested last year's stalks around the holiday season, December, January. But it's fine to do it now, but you don't want to wait too much longer because new growth is going to start late April, early May. So I'm actually going to pull off one that I'm not going to use, but it's healthier for the plant to remove it. Um, I should be wearing gloves, so it's a mistake on my part that I'm not, because not only are the tips of the green sharp, but if you see the spikes on some of the others, I'll show you, even old leaves on there have sharp tips. So again, it's trying to get your leverage, and it's a slow pull. This, woo! This is two years old and it broke halfway. And if I can get a grab in here without poking myself, I might not be able to do it, but it looks like I can. And we've got it. And this is what I want you to be careful from. These small, small little, not even sure what to call them, full of spikes. And if it, it doesn't release immediately, just roll it a little and it comes off great. So folks, Soap Tree Yucca, Coronado Historic Site. A lot of these plants have been planted by landscape architects. They're all throughout the city in people's backyards, uh, around shopping center malls. These can be harvested in a lot of different places. So knock on somebody's door, ask the owner, see if they care. You can go out and find some amazing soap tree yucca. Hi folks, I'm Adrienne Boggs, Instructional Coordinator here at Coronado Historic Site. Uh, here I have one of the stalks that we have just harvested from the soap tree yucca. Our next step in making a walking stick is going to be removing all of the small branches and um, bumps and other rough spots along the stock. Now, I like to use a multi-tool for this step because uh, it works really well and really fast. You have to have a very steady hand though or you'll take huge divots out of your stock. Um, yucca stocks are very woody and hard. So I recommend that if you don't have a multi-tool like this, you use a nice sturdy pocket knife. Um, but what you're gonna do is I just like to angle myself and hold the yucca stock in one hand. I am not going to speak while the multi-tool is on because you will not be able to hear me. So let me show you how I do this.
So Adrian, I noticed that you have um, taken off the, the small branches, but you do have nubs sticking up. What will be your next? Um, I left nubs because as I said, it's really easy to take divots out of the stock. And it's much easier to continue um, removing when you have just a little bit left. So let me show you what I do once I've removed the, the branches. So that can be a little difficult. You need to, if you can brace your stock on your leg, it's better. But you see how I took it down uh, almost flush with the stock. This will make it a lot easier to um, sand down. So once you've removed all of the stems and you've smoothed down the bumps as much as you feel comfortable doing, we need to cut it down to size. Now, the narrow end is going to be the end that touches the ground and the wide end is going to be the end that you grasp. So we want to decide which part of the stick we want to use. So find the place that I feel most comfortable gripping. I think as beautiful as this curve is, I'm not sure if we should keep it because this feels like a nice, that's just a little too big for my hand, but for someone with a larger hand, this might be perfect. And this would be a beautiful um, addition to the stick to decorate. So maybe I won't cut the top off all the way down today, but let's cut the tip at a good spot. We want a nice spot that's thick enough that it won't bend or wobble when you place it on the ground. So maybe about, right there. And we're just going to take our multi-tool. If you don't have a multi-tool, use a saw, a hand saw, um, a sawzall, anything like that will work. Okay, and we're going to shape the tip later, so don't worry about that. We do need to still trim the top off. Now we'll remove all of that later but we do want to take the top up. Okay, so the next step after you have removed all of the branches and rough uh, bumps from your stock is sanding. Now, if you have a sanding tool, go for it. Great, um, I'm sure it'll go fast, but all you need is a little bit of 120 grit sandpaper and a little bit of manpower and you'll get it sanded in no time. You're gonna to wanna to sand it from top to bottom and you're going to want to remember to shape the uh, top of the staff, round those edges, smooth them out, um, as well as um, rounding off the uh, tip of your stick. Now, keep in mind the stick has not been cut down to proper walking stick size. You are going to want to do that uh, before you sand a lot of stock that you have no intention of using. Um, this stock is not for me though, so I have not cut it down yet because I do not know what the desired height is for the person who will be uh, receiving this. But just take a little bit of sandpaper, start at one end and... Now this is messy and I do recommend wearing a mask for this. Um, this stuff uh, is not so pleasant to inhale. Now, one of the great things about yucca walking sticks is that even sanding it down, 
You don't want to sand it down so far that you lose some of the really unique and distinctive characteristics of your stick, uh, particularly all those little kind of arrow-shaped marks where you had leaves growing out. And those are going to be um, along the, the bottom half of your stick. This is the, this is the parts where leaves were growing out. And then up here is where the stems came off. And this is going to require a lot of sanding because you definitely want to get any splintered edges down or off. And it's up to you kind of how bumpy and wavy you leave it. It's uh, up to each per person's interpretation. But you wanna give the whole thing a nice smooth sanding. So once your yucca stick has been stripped and sanded, um, you can, technically you're done. You can use your walking stick as is. Um, I like to wrap it so I have a handle, but there are other ways you can decorate it, and we'll talk about that um, in a little bit. But I'm gonna show you how to do a handle wrapping. So you're going to wanna to get some paracord. I have a bundle of about 33 feet here, 34 feet, something like that. For your walking stick, you're only going to need about 16 or 17 feet of that. So we're gonna start by measuring out two feet for the handle. So that's gonna be our handle. And then you're gonna to want to make a loop in approximately the length you want your walking stick to be, or your uh, walking stick handle. So that's too much. That seems about a good length. Now remember, you're gonna to wanna to put this on the stick where you want your hand to rest. So I'm gonna want my hand to rest about there. So I'm gonna take some tape, tape down the end. use masking tape. I'm using painter's tape. That works well. It comes off really nicely. So that should be more than enough. Still have enough for a tail. So your next step is, go is going to be wrapping. Now you're going to remove the tape as you wrap. I'm just going to take a strip off there. And you want to make sure you wrap it nice and tight. I just hold it taut while I move the string around. Now make sure that this is level. You don't want a wonky strip. Let's remove some more of this tape. I don't think we need that. Make sure as you wrap, each strand stays flush with the one on top. And you're just going to wrap until you get to the end. Removing tape each time as you get close to it. You wanna wrap the paracord up until almost the very end of the loop. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the end of our paracord and thread it through that loop so that we can secure it. Now it's gonna be pretty hard to get the, the pair, end of the paracord through that tiny loop. So I'm gonna loosen up a couple of 
those loops. We can tighten them again later. And I'm going to attempt to get the pair cord. There we go. Okay. So. Okay, now once you've threaded the end of your paracord through that loop, you can take the handle string that you left the top and you pull to secure. Okay, so now we're gonna take a pair of scissors. I pulled a little too hard, that's okay. And take the scissors and you're gonna cut your paracord. And the great thing about paracord is that it melts. So to secure, in fact, I think I may have left a little bit of longer tail than I needed to. To secure the paracord, we are going to melt it. Careful, that's hot. Okay. So that has secured the end of the wrapping there. Now I'm going to show you how to make a cross knot so that we can make our handle. To make the handle, we're going to make a simple cross knot. So what you're gonna do is you're going to cross the string over the front and you wanna make sure that you leave enough loop for your hand. Okay, so you're gonna loop it in front and then around the back, and then you're gonna make a little loop like this and circle around to the front and down. Let me see if I can show you what this looks like. So that is what it's going to look like, okay? Now to finish the cross knot, you're gonna bring your tail up underneath through the big loop and then down through the front of the small loop and that will give you your cross knot. And then we just have to carefully tighten this up. There you go. One simple cross knot. Okay, so then we're gonna do the same thing at the top that we did at the bottom. We're going to cut the excess loop off and then burn it down to secure it. Remember, you don't want to leave too much because we're going to be melting this down. And then just like we did at the bottom, we are going to melt that to secure it. Okay. And we have a yucca walking stick with a paracord handle. Now I'm gonna let Ranger Annie explain some of the different ways you can decorate your stick if this is not the route you want to take. These are different walking sticks that were put together at workshops we held four, five, six years ago at Coronado Historic Site. And this is a combination of five or six different materials. Um, first of all, you'll see that I was able to use a wood-burning tool and made a number of different designs. Uh, you have your corn stalk, you have what might be considered an antelope. Certainly the snake is rather easy. So the Sotriyaka stalk that we're using is a wonderful medium for a wood-burning tool. If you have one, enjoy it. So the red material that you see here is a form of jute. And when I first put it on about five years ago, it's kind of a waxed material. And it's dried out some, but it's still held very, very nice. And it's, it's a wonderful grip, as is the leather that I'm using here. 
Now, I didn't know about the paracord, and I didn't know about making the loop that Adrian demonstrated. So what I did is I simply drilled the hole through, put the little knot. I tend to like to leave my tags because I never know if I'm going to find something along the way, whether it be a bead or a stone with a hole in it, or just something I might want to use to decorate, as you can see that I've done here. This was actually tied on with some fishing line. So once demonstration of a stick, if you're really um, insane and have lots and lots and lots of time, this is thread. This is sewing thread. And to do this, you sit for long periods of time and just wrap the colors. I will tell you it's beautiful, but it's not very practical. It's not where you want to put your hand. You can see that the threads are already beginning to come apart. But when I put this on about six years ago, it held fine for a long period of time. Again, I went with the jute, a very nice wax material. I was into beading, so I made some bead and put, put it on with glue. Just took a wonderful piece of leather, cut it down to size, put holes in it, wrapped it, and you can see I just used a round pattern and went around and put it on, um, tied it off at the end. And I got creative with buckshot shell. Easy to go on the bottom, is gonna protect the end of it, and then you can simply use uh, some glue, pop that in, and you have a nice tip to your walking stick. The last is paint. Um, paint works very, very well. So if you're interested in doing something fun with painting, I just went with stripes. But imagine this whole stick as your palette and you can paint all the way up and down, creating whatever you'd like. It's whatever you want to make it. Be as creative as you want. So enjoy Coronado Historic Site, Bernalillo, New Mexico, part of the Department of Cultural Affairs.